Good morning all and welcome to today's video. So today I have three pairs on watch and those are West Texas Oil, Aussie Dollar and Dollar Swiss. So let's start off with my favourite of the bunch. Let's break that down for you now. My favourite is West Texas Oil. So on the higher time frames, the narrative as I see it is that we have this sharp move up here followed by the sharp move down. There was a big sell off here. Remember this is the weekly chart. What happens? We have evidence of these psychological patterns that we look for. Once again, we have a near miss. We come all the way back up. We get close to the area. We sell off. Okay, price finds its way back up. We near miss to that area again, and we sell off. Okay. We then come all the way back up, and we eventually, we finally tap into that area. And then we move to the downside, but price gets to that area by way of a wick. And if you look on the monthly chart, it is a bullish wick. Yes, we we wicked through the area, not to it, but it was a bullish wick. And as I've said previously, many, many times, these bullish wicks, when we have a, a bullish candle, this is not the most bullish, it has to be said, but when we have a bullish candle with a big green wick above it, often these get filled or almost entirely filled, as you can see here, and then we push to the downside, which is what happened. Okay, we then have the move to the downside. Price comes down. It leaves a footprint here. We have a, a sharp move up followed by a sharp move down. What happens? We tap into that area. Once again, we break just above, which is what we typically do on the higher time frames. If we're going to move to the downside, and then we see that impulse correction continuation, which we typically see if we are going to move to the downside. OK, we have. If we just zoom back out, we have a we have a near miss here to here. I've Or you, you could have it to this wick. I've just cut through that. I typically just cut through the wicks, especially if they are just wicks on multiple time frames. So if you see a low or a high, and it's a wick on multiple time frames, then that was likely just volatility caused by, no doubt, caused by news. So I've just cut through that wick. But even if you didn't, we have a near miss here to this area here. Okay, so when price gets close and it doesn't quite tap into it, if we tap into an area such as this, then it's likely that we will push to the downside um, to take out the low, which we near miss too. Okay, so that is a positive confluence factor. And you can see before I even drill down, given that I'll be looking to get short on this pair today, you can see a near miss to here, a near miss to here, and a near miss to here. So when we see that, these remain high areas of value for sellers to be getting out of their positions, okay? And it is more likely that price will gravitate back towards these areas. If we haven't tapped into them yet, then there will be buyers waiting for price to get to these areas before they look to get long, okay? So if, for example, if we had a, you know, if there wasn't a near miss, let's say this low had tapped into this, uh, this base here, then there may be some buyers because we've tapped into this area. Some people now looking to get long up to perhaps these areas because we've tapped into a low, which they were actually looking at with the view of getting long. Okay. If that makes sense. If we, if we near miss all of these lows, then these people, many of them will still be waiting. Okay. It's just, uh, common sense so as i drill down you can see we have what do we have here we have prices moved up in a non-progressive way okay so the thing that i see here is that we've moved up correctively as i've said previously those of us who trade the falcon strategy of which i am a member and if you don't know what that is and you're watching on trading view then if you head to my youtube channel you can find a link to that on my YouTube channel profile. And if you are on YouTube, then just do that. What I've just suggested. We're always, anal those of us who trade the Falcon strategy are always analyzing how price is moved, not just if it's moved. And you can see here, we've moved up in a non-progressive way, giving me a move, giving me a an indication that a move to the downside to take out these near misses and these lows, which we keep miss missing, near missing too, may be imminent. Okay. The other thing that stands out to me before I even drill down is the fact that the last leg has momentum, okay? So if you just look at all these candles, we have a bullish momentum right at the end. That is another thing which we typically see 
if we're going to move to the downside. So when we have exhaustive price action like this, price moves up correctively. If we are going to move to the downside and if we are tapping into areas of value, the last leg tends to have momentum behind it. So that is a tick in the box. Okay, what do we have here? If we just pattern separate all of this, we have we have this structure here. So this helps us. We do this. I was doing this regularly. I'm not doing it at the minute, but pattern separation, okay, helps us to determine where one pattern starts and another one ends. So you can see here we have this not so much a first touch. It might be a bit clearer if I just draw down to the one hour chart. Yeah, we don't really have a first touch, but we have that one, two, three wave move where the one and the three wave are of a similar length. We have a middle section, a more corrective middle section within it. We tap into this area here. We push to the downside and then price leaves a footprint. Okay. We have a bit of a sharp move up followed by a sharp sell off, which resulted in price selling off aggressively with very little pullbacks all the way down to about here. And then it continued down to there. So that gives me a clue that that is an area of value that we could be looking looking at with a view to getting short from. What do we also see? We also see we near missed to that area. That also gives me an indication that this is a higher area of value. When we near missed to it, there is likely people watching it knowing that it's a higher area of value. And some of those, many of those people would have FOMO'd into the position. What comes up? What happens next? We near missed to that area and near missed to that area again, we come back in, up again, and eventually we tap into that area. Okay. And notice if you just look at this leg here, how the corrections are getting smaller and smaller. That is usually an indication that people are getting out of their positions. So there's so much about this uh, setup which makes sense. So deeper pullback, deeper pullback, and then the pullbacks get shallower and shallower and shallower, giving me a clue that the buyers are getting out of their positions. Okay, We were building volume here. The volume, which we can see by way of these, the size of these corrections, is going out of the market. Okay. So with all of that in mind, what I'll be looking for is the following. I'll be looking for I'll be looking for a push back below here because we do have to remember that this is here and this high is here. And potentially this could be some kind of bull flag to push higher, which retests the back end of that and potentially comes all the way up to here because we're not a million miles from that. We're not that close, but we're not a million miles from from that high there okay so that is a factor in my thinking so what i'll be looking for specifically is are we looking for a push down we're moving down correctively at the moment but that could it would only take one candle to negate everything what i'll be looking for is a push down below this area of interest okay it's not an area of value for me anymore because we blasted through it and moved to the next one but it is an area of interest if we push down below this area of interest uh, on the one hour chart and we get a five minute correction. This is one of the few few times where you will actually see me look specifically just for a five minute, um, uh, just for a five minute correction. So if we push down on the one hour chart, okay, I will then drop to the 15 minute chart uh, and I'll be looking for a corrective 15 minute candle to close. And once it does, I will drop to the five minute chart and look for six to eight corrective five minute candles so high up in the run this is an aft entry high up in the run these independent five minute flags uh, are very lucrative and i would manage this and this one i would just let this run and my target as i've got with my arrow there would be all the way down to there i would use the fibonacci tool and i would measure from there to there and then i would lock in i would set a take profit at 90% of that range where we typically see the deeper pullbacks and then I will trail my stops accordingly down to that area. Okay. But as in first inflection point, I'll be looking at this low here because there was a sharp move down here followed by a sharp move up. So we may get some kind of uh, reaction from that area. I don't see that as much, that significant, but if we don't manage to get an independent five minute flag, so I don't take risk entries within independent five minute flags because that would require it to be structured. And the only way that we would know that it was structured if it was just a correction was to drop down to say the one minute chart or the three minute chart and we don't trade on those time frames. So if we got a a one hour push down and a 15 minute flag, so that would be six to eight corrective uh, 15 minute candles, then I would do the same thing. I would set an entry on the break 
but I would also be looking for the five minute risk entry within the 15 minute flag to see if I could, if it, if the 15 minute flag was structured to see if I could actually get short uh, f within there, which would give me a, a greater risk to reward. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be looking for from West Texas oil. And what I've done is I've set an alert just above the area of interest to see if we push down towards it. And of course, if that doesn't trigger, then obviously we can't have broken below here. So I won't be looking to place a trade and I won't even check this pair because there'd be no point. So that is West Texas oil, Aussie, uh, Aussie key, Aussie CAD rather. So if we just zoom out, so this is second on my list. You can see what do we have here. Here we have this, this one, two, three structure there. We have a one, two, three, with the one, two, three middle section. Okay. We then come to the downside. We tap into the base of that structure. We do so correctively. So that gives me an indication that we're likely to move to the upside, which we do. Okay. And what happens there? We move, we tap into this. There was a sharp move up there, followed by a sharp move down. We tap into that area correctively. You can see the price got there correctively, suggesting a move to the downside was imminent. And we did get a move to the downside. If I just drill down. Then what I see, we do have to be mindful of we have a sharp move set just above it. So there's always the case that we could tap into that high and form something like this before moving to the downside. However, if you look at what price has done, once again, price uh, moved below this sharp point there, uh, this sharp point down here. We moved down sharply and moved up sharply. So if we were going to take out this high at this moment in time, we would likely have got some kind of reaction from here. Okay, we would likely just wick below, wick back up, and then we would have moved to the upside to take out this and then potentially move down from there. But we didn't do that. What actually happened is we corrected below this low, which suggests suggested to me that there was not enough liquidity there to send it to the to the upside, which means that this could be an impulse correction continuation to take out this sharp move. The sharpness often indicates that there's volume there before we then potentially move to the upside to take out this high, which this high near miss too. Okay. And that would make sense. Contextually, that all makes sense to me. Okay. If you're newer, this may be, or new to this way of trading, that might, might not make so much sense to you, but these things, a lot of this comes with experience. So what do we have here? We had this one, two, three structure here with the middle section. It fails to commit. It taps into this sharp low here. Well, not that sharp, but we have a bit of a move there. It taps into that, finds liquidity, moves to the upside, breaks above here. Because notice before we tapped to the area and didn't break above it. That often means that there's still liquidity up there, which needs to be filled. We do fill it. We move down. Remember me saying in yesterday's video that we moved down correctively and that I wasn't convinced that this was going to sell off because we moved down correctively, which might indicate that we scooped back up or formed a uh, move back up, which is exactly what we did. Nature theory once again. And I'm just seeing this when, when you see this at the end of a structure, when you see a just a scoop and then a drop, that's usually just more orders being placed in this area. Okay which indicate that this is a high area of, area of value, which is why more orders came in. A scoop back up to take uh, more orders came in, and then we dropped. Okay, so those orders uh, that are being placed up there were dragging price back up, which was likely causing the corrective move down. But notice now we've broken below this low and we're correcting. So this looks to me like an impulse correction continuation to push lo lower to potentially take out this low and certainly move towards the base of this structure. So what I'll be looking for in this instance, because this is not higher up in a higher time frame run, I won't be looking for independent five minute flags. What I'll be looking for is the one hour push down, which we've got now. Okay. I'll then be looking for price to correct. Um, we've had a, I'll be looking for one corrective one hour candle. We've got that now. You can see price is correcting. And then I will be looking to get short either, either on the break of the flag within it i would once again be looking for that five minute risk entry if we just analyze this on the five minute chart so you can see what what this is quite interesting because this is what i thought would likely happen we have a sharp move up here followed by a sharp move down which just so happens to be retesting the back end of that and what do we have within that we kind of have this 
this potential move here. So I wouldn't be surprised, given that this is Aussie CAD, which I wouldn't be surprised if it goes at the start of the New York session. So in a few hours time, I wouldn't be surprised if this moves to the downside like that, pushes back up. And then we have a one, two, three, which intersects with this sharp move where the, there's likely liquidity because it pulled up, pulled up steeply and then pulled back down. And then I would most definitely be looking to get short with a risk entry there. When you have a one, two, three, which lines up with a hook point, which retests the back end of a previous structure, that is very, very intentional, in my opinion, and experience for a move to the downside. So I'm just letting this do its thing at the moment, okay? Because on the one hour chart, that just looks a little bit, it looks a little bit undeveloped to me at the moment. So I'm just going to let that do its thing and see what it wants to do. I have an alert set to see if we tap into that that sharp move there that I was talking about, which looks like it may be triggered in a moment. And I also put another alert just to see if we can push down uh, to give our give price a bit more of a base. OK, so that is Aussie CAD. I'm going to move on to the next one. That alert may go off in a minute which may interfere with the video, but regardless, let's move on to dollar Swiss. So, so dollar Swiss, the lower time frame structure of this is not quite as, uh, uh, not quite as clean, but what we do have is we have a, an incredibly sharp move there, sharp move down, sharp move up. What does price do? It near misses to this area. And then we have that one, two, and the third touch, which then taps into that area. Okay. Here we go. There's Aussie CAD going off. Hopefully that didn't interfere with the video. I noticed that these alerts do tend to interfere with the videos. We have that middle section. We then tap into that area. Okay. Whoops. And then what happens on the daily chart? And get that off the chart. There we go. Um, and then we have, we broke below all of this. And now we're trading back above the high, back above here. And we could be seeing potentially a move. We have that impulse. We have an impulse correction continuation, another impulse correction continuation. And we have a sharp move up here, followed by a sharp move down. So as a first target, uh, as a solid high time frame target, this would be a good place where I'd anticipate the buyers getting out of their positions. OK, if we just drill down. So what do we have here? We've kind of I was looking at this as the area of value. Because we came back down, we near missed to that area where it was a fairly sharp move, but then we tapped into the correction blow as well. Okay. Now, this is quite good because it kind of implies that we've washed out more liquidity. So when we tap into an area of value and another one, and then we completely retrace back above both of them, that implies that we've washed out more liquidity than if we just tapped into one of them. Okay. And we're also trading above this high as well, the, the near miss. So what I'll be looking for from this pair is the following. So once again, just letting this, because it's not the cleanest of structures, I'm just letting this do its thing. I'm letting this develop a little bit. This to me looks like it may, it may push up because this is quite steep. It may push back up, push back down. And if it does, then I'll be looking to get long either with a, uh, a reduced risk entry on the break of the flag or a risk entry within it. If we just look at the structure, there's not really any, you know, we had a bit of a sharp pullback here and a sharp move up, but price hasn't responded from that area. So that's given me a clue that this is still developing a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to let that develop and do its thing. And I've set an alert. What I've done is on this one, I've set an alert just above this correction to see if we can push back up for a more flatter flag. And then if we do do that, then I'll be setting an alert below to see if we push back down and then we would have that kind of structure and that's when i would set my entry order on the break while simultaneously looking for that risk entry if price came back down to this low okay seeing if i could get long within the flag as i've illustrated here and that's what i'm going to be looking for folks i would be able to manage that then up to this high as a first target and then of course if we kept going for that higher time frame target then there's some decent profit potential up to there. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And of course, if I place any more trades, then I will break them down for you in the next video, which will be next week. Now, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I will speak to you again soon.